Investors, this is a critical trade alert. Prepare for hyperinflation in food and energy costs in 2022. Now, if you're already positioned with our portfolios, you're, you're set up. You have nothing to worry about if you're new and have a lot of money in markets. Uh, pay close attention to this webinar. We're going to teach you how to protect your wealth ahead of the war with Russia. Uh, it's becoming more apparent by the minute the global elite have forced Putin to escalate this war, and they want it to be a long war with the goal of uh, what I believe is now to drive inflation extremely hot and potentially melt down bond markets. Uh, so we're now anticipating inflation will remain much hotter than expected until the war ends. Before this, uh, this began, which we're now, what, three to four weeks into the invasion. I was expecting inflation to peak in March and to have dovish surprises from the Federal Reserve this year. Uh, but now it's looking like there's no chance of inflation really falling uh, at a speed it needs to anytime soon. Uh, and furthermore, it looks like these sanctions on Russia are not going to be reversed anytime soon. So it's very critical you follow the message of this webinar to protect yourself just in case things go bad with three critical stocks to protect your wealth. Now our advisory that is up 11.34%, I think we hit 14% Friday, pulled back a little bit, uh, doing really well in 2022. Most investors are getting slaughtered. If you're all in on tech, you've really lost a lot of money. If you're in on ARC funds, you've gotten smashed even worse. If you're doing the 60-40 bond portfolio, you're getting smacked as well. So if you're only down 10%, you're actually doing pretty good this year. Our high-risk growth portfolio returned 233% in 2021. We're going to try to beat that this year. And again, that turned every $10,000 into $33,000 last year. Let's review our current trade recommendation for a $10,000 portfolio. Again, if you had 20,000, double all these, 100,000 multiplied by 10. Step one, buy UVXY. With commodity prices continuing to go up, 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 and the bond market down, 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 uh, the risk of something snapping is growing by the minute. It's critical you own UVXY. This is the stock crash insurance. We're not just betting down on stocks with this product. Uh, it actually only goes up if the market accelerates to the downside. So it has to go faster and faster and faster. Uh, so we're talking about another March 2020-like experience potentially hitting markets. Uh, so again, the play with the $10,000 portfolio would be 82 shares of UVXY. Here's a look at that chart. UVXY went up 1,100% in 2020 in less than a month. And most of that gain was in uh, about 10 days. So if you look, the first 20 days only delivered a 400% return. The next 10 jumped it up an additional 700%. So it's not like a inverse ETF. This is a asymmetrical return, which is important. It allows us to remain long stocks and have our insurance in place. And so unfortunately, uh, I do remain uh, relatively in a large percentage of our portfolio in the crash insurance at this point in time. Uh, so far, year to date, this has gone up over 70%. Uh, it has pulled back a little bit, so probably more at about 55% return on the year. Uh, but last week, we had our stock portfolio jump. We had four days of the stock market going uh, up, up, up. And so we actually had really nice gains for both portfolios last week. So we'll take a look at that data in a moment. Step two, pick your best long asset. Our favorite long asset is Ethereum with the Grayscale Trust, E-T-H-E. This is like getting into Windows or Microsoft when it was only seven years old. So imagine the returns you could have made uh, getting into Microsoft and doing nothing uh, over the last several decades. In fact, Bill Gates, had he not divested and diversified his portfolio, uh, would be richer than Elon Musk today had he not sold his positioning. What is Ethereum? It is replacing the monetary system 
from everything from brokerage houses to loan origination uh, to uh, to just an entire operating system that's decentralized that allow you to program any type of application you like. And it is growing rapidly. The user growth for Ethereum is outpacing the internet. And with governments uh, stealing people's money, whether it's Canadian truckers or an entire country, uh, the reasoning to get into decentralized money is becoming more apparent by the moment. So this is our favorite multi-decade hold. Probably will take two to three decades to really slow down the growth of Ethereum. So a very bullish outlook. Now, if you hopped into this in 2017, uh, you're currently seeing a return of 19,000% with a buy and hold strategy. In fact, our whole strategy for Portfolio Builder uh, is essentially to protect a long position in Ethereum over the long run. And so there's really two plays to protect Ethereum and that's gonna be critical over the next 30 days until we see whether this war is going to uh, really spiral out of control or if we're going to see a peace. Uh, and so far, uh, both sides remain very stubbornly positioned. We'll talk about what would happen um, on both sides. Uh, but this is really important. The, the next thing that potentially breaks, in my opin opinion, will be the cost of natural gas. Natural gas provides 25% of electricity. And uh, essentially, Europe, if they want to stop Russia's war, uh, they have to stop buying natural gas and oil from Russia. The problem is it means lights out for Europe. Furthermore, if Putin really wants to punish Europe, assuming they start to support Ukraine too much, uh, lights out. They could stop sending gas to Europe with a snap of a finger. And again, it would be very painful for Europe. So we're playing boil, which is U.S. natural gas. Uh, if if Russia wants to keep bringing in the money, uh, which I believe is their most likely outcome unless they get really pushed into a corner, uh, the more likely path for natural gas is it rises because Europe starts to reroute orders. And they just started rerouting orders, a big headline today. Uh, but over time, as they try to uh, remove their reliance on Russia for energy, we're gonna see these costs go up, up, up all year. We've already seen oil hit 137, come back down to 100, jump to 114 today. And so the, uh, the play we sold too early in our GU just keeps screaming up. So uh, I know for people who sold early, you, you wish you hadn't. I still see natural gas being the, the better buy with less risk and more upside. So we really have not seen Europe slow down purchases of natural gas. In fact, they've ramped it up and we haven't seen either party uh, start to play with the energy uh, embargo. So once that does come into play, this thing could really skyrocket. So our potential sell target for boil could be well over hundred, potentially 200. If Europe cuts themselves off of natural gas from Russia, expect a nice slow rise. If Putin decides to use it as a tactic uh, expect limit up days uh, for, for that product. So let's take a look at the overall asset allocation. And again, this is for our high risk strategy. We also have a safe growth strategy where we're not all in on Ethereum. Instead, we're long a global stock portfolio, including Europe, Asia, and the US. Plus we have Bitcoin, plus we have rare earth metals and uranium. So uh, today in the beginning of the webinar for free trials, we give away the high risk strategy, which is only these three stocks. If you do upgrade, you'll gain access to our safe growth strategy, uh, which is going to be a good place to put more money uh, for less risk. So we'll, we'll review both these strategies today. Right now in the high risk portfolio, we have 12% of our portfolio in UVXY. Now it's not important to target 12%. You need to have 82 shares per $10,000. Okay, the percent is gonna go up and down as the market bounces around. Next, you wanna have 207 shares of ETHE, the Grayscale Trust, which gives you exposure to Ethereum. That's about half the portfolio currently. And right now we have a mega hedge on uh, essentially inflation in natural gas prices with boil. 
Uh, this is at 93 shares. Right now, we believe this is the safest setup for risk reward until we get a de-escalation in the war. We'll cover more predictions in the war as we uh, hit the news feed. Now, again, what should we expect if a de-escalation is in the cards? Energy costs could sell off rapidly. So if we find out that Russia and Ukraine are going to strike a deal, which doesn't seem to be any, anywhere near happening, uh, we want to dump UVXY, dump boil, uh, and then go very long Ethereum. The bond market's getting so beat up, that might be a good way to diversify this portfolio a little bit. We'll spend a lot of time looking at the bond market here. Um, and then I'm also looking at shorting the price of oil back into the 90 to 80 range for a very short period of time, in which case we'd go back long in our GU uh, once we get back to that uh, sell off. So right now, this is our play. Soon as we see the war escalate, uh, expect Boyle and UVXY to skyrocket up. Uh, and if we see the war de-escalate, we will quickly send out a sell alert to dump UVXY, dump Boyle, and then get more aggressive on the offense with bets that relate to essentially interest rates falling, uh, which would be very good for tech and especially Ethereum. Now, I got to say, with the bond market falling off a freaking cliff today, uh, the Ethereum's up 1.66%. Uh, so that's just fantastic and shows you how strong that asset is. So here's a look at the price of oil. And you can see when it goes above 100, uh, it typically leads to a crash of some sort. So now a lot of money could be potentially made shorting oil if the right things occur. So we'll have to look at what sort of resolution potentially happens uh, when that comes. And more importantly, if sanctions are going to be removed or not. At this point, I don't see sanctions being removed from Russia ever, as this war is getting very bloody uh, by the minute. Uh, Steve says, what made Jason change his mind? Well, uh, you know, the uh, the analysis uh, from the was that this was going to be a two day war and Ukraine would surrender. And so what we're seeing now is uh, Russia and India, uh, excuse me, China and India are now siding with Russia and uh, and Ukraine is is being very, very stubborn here as people are starving and uh, their whole country is getting blown to pieces. Okay, so here's a look at the treasury market. This has now fallen to 130. Uh, I will buy treasuries at 120. I do not think markets can sustain interest rates over 3%, and we'd be right around that level uh, if we hit 120. So uh, for us, we'd use TMF. That gives us leverage. Uh, and again, that is really the ultimate interest rate, I believe the, the markets could handle before it start to collapse assets around it. So very, very important moves in the bond market. Currently, we had Jerome Powell coming out saying he's going to do a 50 basis point hike in May. And um, the next one after that is June. So the market's already priced in another 100 basis points of rate hikes. Now, what the Fed does like to do is uh, talk a big game about being super hawkish. And then when the time comes, uh, surprise the markets by being a little bit easier. And so that's what they did uh, with the 25 basis point hike uh, last week. So we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, but during a tightening cycle in general, uh, in general, what happens is investors get forced into anything except bonds. And okay, so until the market believes the inflation's coming down, and the interest rate has peaked, uh, investors are going to do anything but buy bonds. And so that's really the setup we had from 2016 to 2018. Okay, we had the US tightening, raising interest rates and reducing its balance sheet. And at the same time, we had China uh, expanding credit because their real estate market nearly collapsed in 2015. And this was one of the best returning periods for Bitcoin running up 4,400%. So there's that chart. Now, again, if you know what happens next, 
uh, everything started to fall apart in 2018. First, Bitcoin fell from 20,000 uh, to sub 5,000. Then emerging markets fell. Then later in the year, Europe fell. And then by Q4, uh, the 10-year hit 3.5% and the NASDAQ crashed. It's called the Christmas massacre. And then, of course, the Fed started printing money and lowering rates. Um, so... In the short term, super bullish, but as soon as the interest rates get too attractive relative to inflation, uh, people can flock to bonds all of a sudden. Cash is trash, bonds are garbage. That's where we're at currently, and it leaves no logical option. Expect stocks, cryptocurrencies, and commodities to melt up until they become attractive. Now, it's happening faster than I anticipated. The bond market's selling off much faster, much harder than I've anticipated. Um, so we'll keep a close eye on this over the coming weeks. Uh, but again, we just priced in uh, 50 basis point hikes in the next two Federal Reserve FOMC decision meetings. So I'd be surprised if the TLT does fall much further uh, until we get uh, to those points in time. Now, the longer the war persists, the longer bonds remain ugly, uh, even potentially at 3%. So I'm expecting to see a ridiculous inflation print for the next two months. Uh, it may not rise after the next two months, but it may remain extremely elevated at uncomfortable levels until the war ends, the sanctions are removed and energy costs fall. So we will see just how long Ukraine can survive this assault. Um, but it does, it does look like they are starting to, to run out of uh, everything to survive this much longer. We'll take a look at that as we uh, get into the Twitter feed. Now, of course, depending on which type of propaganda you're looking at, either Russia is getting smoked and they're going to retreat and they're desperate to end the war, uh, or Ukraine's been cornered and uh, is essentially ready to, to throw up a white flag as soon as possible. And so again, it's, it's very hard to, to predict exactly the timing of this. And that's why every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I update you with the latest news from all types of propaganda uh, so we can get the best judgment as to when the war is going to end. And again, once it ends, we want to sell Boil, sell UVXY, short oil back down and go much more aggressive into stocks, especially uh, duration stocks. So the NASDAQ and Ethereum are our two favorite picks as well as Bitcoin. Now, if you're a free trial, don't miss the sell alerts. You need to upgrade. Call Dean at 505-322-7515. Uh, we got asked questions about shorting oil. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly what we'll do with shorting oil yet. And it's really going to be if they end the sanctions, most likely. Uh, but the bloodiness of the war has gotten pretty extreme. I'm now not so sure um, that they're, yeah, I'm not so sure how exciting uh, this could be to short oil unless the sanctions are ended. And I'm starting to think that there won't be any sanctions uh, ended almost regardless uh, at this point. So might be more interested in just adding to Ethereum and maybe even going long treasuries uh, versus getting too aggressive with shorting oil, depending on how this plays out. Okay, so here's the bond markets. Um, here's what just got priced in. Let me zoom in on this. So this is the big move today. Uh, and if I zoom out to one day, uh, we can see all these cycles. So here's the last few cycles. And we're looking at the two year, 10 year. Okay, so here's where the US stock market crashed uh, in 2018, right here in October. Okay, so you got that just insane 3% on the TLT, uh, excuse me, on the tenure. That's really when 
the US market snapped. Uh, but here's where, this is where Bitcoin snapped right here, just with the idea of this uh, getting too aggressive. So this rise in the two year is potentially the fastest rising two year yield in history. Uh, we'll have to go back into the 70s to see if there's been anything this obscene, uh, but this is something else. Okay, so that is what's really driving the Fed to, to hype up all these rate hikes is to catch up with the two year. Um, and then we can see the, the spread has almost collapsed. You get paid 2.1 uh, to loan the government for two years, 2.3 for 10 years and 2.5 for 30. Uh, so again, I believe markets will start to break if the 30 year hits three and we will aggressively buy uh, US treasuries with ticker TMF in that event. Uh, so again, we're, we're quite a ways off from that uh, at this point. Let me go ahead and look at what we've seen this year and the change on the 30 year. Okay, and the rise really began in December. So we went from So just December 21st, we were at 1.67. And now this has just been a bloodshed to two and a half. Okay, so uh, the distance traveled uh, uh, is greater than what we would need to, to break markets. So I, I do think that most likely this sell-off will end by uh, this week and probably start to fall back until we get more confirmation terms of how long the war is going to last and what uh, Powell's really going to do in May. So the market quickly reacted to his speech today. In fact, uh, what he specifically said is without question, there'll be a 50 basis point hike in May uh, and there'd be almost nothing that would prevent that. Okay, looking at some questions. Uh, Steven says, should we sell some UVXY? No. No, no changes to the portfolio. Uh, Marcus says, why do the neocons and globalists want to continue this war? Uh, to make the cost of food and energy go up, apparently, uh, seems to be, what seems to be the goal of all this is to create inflation. Because uh, there's really no other way to explain uh, either party here. Okay, Barry says, I'm hearing that ETFs won't hand the funds to pay off investors anymore. Are you talking about uh, ETHE, Barry, or what are you talking about? Uh, but no, I don't think there's any risk of ETFs not allowing you to sell, at least not the ones we're trading. Now, RSX did get locked out. So thank goodness we didn't jump into RSX, the Russian ETF. Uh, I would love to buy those assets up at 90% off, uh, but it's not possible. It's been blocked and the stock market's still shut down in Russia. Uh, Stephen says one major difference between 2022 and the Russian Finnish war uh, is that the Russians invaded late winter instead of late fall. Much better timing. Yeah, so very interesting developments here. Okay, so here's the two and 10 year treasury uh, spread. Now, a lot of people are pointing out the two year and three month have a big spread and that that's a better uh, indicator for a recession. Um, but this is the, the classic two and tenure, and it's at 0.17. So it inverts, then it steepens, and the steepening is what tends to lead to the recession. Uh, so at this point, we're not steepening. And actually what happens after an inversion is very bullish for stocks, because uh, it means there's more pain in bonds yet to come. And so participants have no choice to invest in anything except, again, uh, stocks, cryptocurrencies, commodities, uh, until things start to, to snap. So let's look at the, uh, go zooming out on this. And uh, except for in the 80s, you can see the inversion went really negative uh, and the recession hit before the steepening occurred. 
uh, and also uh, once again in 1981. Outside of that event, the yield curve inverted and the markets didn't crash for about another 12 to 16 months. Uh, so typically this is not a sell signal uh, right away. It's the steepening that we wanna be worried about. So if the two year starts to fall back down and the 30 year remains elevated or rises, uh, that's when we get concerned. Okay, here's the yield curve on another format. Uh, this comparing last month to this month. Uh, so we've started to have uh, the five and seven year trade above the 10 year for a little bit uh, last week. And the 20 year is still over the 30 year. Uh, this is what people are pointing out though, is this huge spread between the three month and the two year. Uh, probability of 50 basis point hike is up to 48%. Um, so again, they keep kind of jawboning us with uh, hawkish talk and then deliver something a little more dovish. Seems to be their strategy to try to quote unquote soft land uh, the inflation in the economy. Uh, and also we're, we're leading into midterm elections. So fascinating <laughs> how this is gonna play out. Here's the VIX futures, it's in contango. Uh, when we were seeing the VIX go up or UVXY go up, it was in backwardation. So right now uh, it's not in a positioning for UVXY to scream up. We need the April VIX contract to jump uh, ahead of May for it to go up in value. Now here's a look at the cryptocurrencies we like. Uh, in the safe growth strategy, we're doing the less volatile asset, Bitcoin. Uh, so I think there's been 19 million Bitcoins printed so far, 21 million total to be issued. So that supply is dwindling down. Uh, Ethereum uh, is burning tokens as well. So it's got some characteristics more like Bitcoin now. It's getting ready to move to proof of stake. Uh, and its partner is Polygon. So in uh, the safe growth strategy, we have a big Bitcoin play. As uh, soon as we think energy costs are gonna fall and yields are gonna fall, uh, which again, I believe will be highly correlated to the end of the war. Uh, we wanna jump into the NASDAQ and Bitcoin is our immediate plays for safe growth. For high risk, we wanna jump into Ethereum. And for the uh, private equity offering we have for paid customers only, uh, Polygon's our favorite play. It's been greatly outperforming all of these. And it's again, a partner for Ethereum. It's the lightning network uh, for Ethereum, if you're familiar with that. Okay, here we are at the reverse repo. This is the backup QE for markets at 1.7 trillion. Uh, so this is bullish. If it starts to dwindle, uh, that could mean money is starting to uh, get thin. This chart, we're comparing Boyle to NRGU. And so NRGU is smoking uh, Boyle so far, but I wanna remind you the catalyst to take Boyle higher has not been used yet. So Europe's been unable to reroute its orders yet, but they're planning to do it, uh, which will drive up natural gas costs. And Putin hasn't used this as a weapon to, to hurt Europe yet. Uh, so. If we look at Boyle as a hedge against the war, uh, it's still really looking very, very good uh, and tends to be highly correlated to the price of oil. Uh, so it's, uh, in my opinion, has a better bang for the buck moving forward. Um, so we remain long Boyle understanding uh, if Europe reroutes the orders, this could go up all year. Uh, and if Putin pulls a, pulls a war tactic, uh, it could go up overnight. So until the war is over, we like oil. Um, and I don't think we should be messing with oil at 111 bucks uh, currently. Here's a look at Brent versus oil. And so if I zoom out a bit, well, we can see this huge catch up play uh, for oil compared to Brent. Now in February, we had it skyrocket for a day, which was wild, uh, crashed back down and it's retraced half of that. So it just gives you a feel uh, when the right things occur, which again, this is a war hedge. Uh, 
this thing can just skyrocket up. So we remain long boil. This chart, we're looking at lumber futures against oil. Uh, the supply of houses is down to about 1.2 months and sales of new homes have gone very strong. We got new print in. Uh, and this is with mortgage rates rising to 4%. So uh, no sign of this um, inflationary problem coming to an end anytime soon on oil or lumber futures. This chart, we're looking at gold versus copper. And if I zoom out a bit, you can see just how correlated they are. Um, but this is used to predict bond yields. And in general, if copper is going up faster than gold, we're going to predict higher yields. So we were watching that last week. And sure enough, it did predict higher yields ahead of uh, this crash in oils uh, to, uh, in interest rates today. So very interesting to see that. Uh, Copper futures predict that a couple days early. In this chart, we're looking at the NASDAQ in the candlestick. Yellow are interest rates and NRGU are the big oil and gas companies times three. And so uh, very interesting. We can see right here, uh, bond yields fell for a little bit and the NASDAQ had that massive jump up last week. Uh, today, we got another jump in yields, NASDAQ's flat, and uh, we got another jump in NRGU. China started printing money and bailing out their stock markets. We saw a big jump in emerging markets. Uh, this could potentially be a good starting point for emerging markets to outperform uh, US markets. So, so far since March of last year, uh, it has done very poorly relative to US stocks. Uh, but now we're coming into a time period where inflation's hot in the US, uh, hotter than any other uh, large GDP nation, much higher. Um, we're probably going to have a split government. In other words, Republicans will probably take the House or Senate. So we may get less spending. And we've got potentially two years of uh, tightening monetary policy. Um, so at the same time, China is now done cracking down on its industries, cleaning up its economy, needs to bail out the real estate sector, its stock market, uh, and it's trying to hit a 5.5% mandated GDP. So they're going to have to start easing uh, credit. So this is probably going to be very soon a, a really nice setup for emerging markets. Now, again, uh, probably need energy costs to come down and the dollar to start falling for emerging markets to really outperform. Uh, we don't have this in our high risk strategy. It is a big position in the safe growth. Russell 2000, we're not positioned in, uh, but if it was falling off a cliff, we'd wanna take notice. Uh, it's been trading in a trend since February uh, after falling significantly uh, from a higher level. So its support is uh, hanging in there so far, not giving us a uh, sell signal. European stocks have made back almost all of the, the war headlines. Um, and this is one of Jeffrey Gunlack's favorite stock indexes currently. Uh, we remain long this index, EFO, but we use EFA for leverage in our safe growth strategy. And here's a look at the dollar. So what, the last time emerging markets outperformed US markets by about five to one uh, was leading into the 2008 crash. And I want you to note the dollar uh, fell from 2002, where we bottomed out of the dot-com crash at 120 and fell all the way to 71. And boy, oh boy, emerging markets screamed higher. Um, so we'll see if we get a, a similar sell in the DXY once the war slows down. Right now, there's a lot of demand for dollars in these uncertain times. My Current prediction is we fall to 90 and then want to do a major rebalance in the portfolio, essentially go along the dollar and treasuries at that time. And again, we've been doing really well with the dollar rising. So just wait till you see how Bitcoin and Ethereum performs when the dollar rolls over and heads back down towards 90. Okay, here's the Chinese currency zoomed out. Uh, super, super big bid for the yuan. Uh, if this is going down, it's going up in value relative to the dollar. 
So while the dollar is going straight up, uh, so has the yuan. So China has a lot of room to ease credit and weaken their currency uh, to hit these GDP goals. In this chart, we're looking at Taiwan semiconductors, Alibaba and Tencent. And what we're hoping for is to see Alibaba and Tencent start to outperform uh, one of its uh, peers over in Taiwan, Taiwan Semiconductors. And so uh, it did start to do that right here. So this could be a really good time to be getting exposed to emerging markets. Uh, for the high risk strategy, a potential play I'm looking at is to get us back into FNGU, uh, which uh, would be again, the yields falling play uh, targeting Alibaba uh, and a bunch of beat up US tech companies uh, that are very concentrated in that ETF. Okay, Toyota's bouncing back. Uh, there's gonna be some pretty serious problems for the uh, car industry if the war doesn't end. Uh, looks like neon mainly uh, is very important to chips and uh, a lot of the neon comes from Russia, Ukraine. So this could become very problematic uh, for, for semiconductor companies and thus everybody needs those chips uh, the longer this war goes on. So there's a lot of reasons to try to conclude this war um, and why we're not currently uh, betting that it'll go on indefinitely and crash everything. Here's a look at bond markets. Uh, we've got the junk bond market, the investment grade bond market and the TLT all collapsing, uh, selling off together. And again, this was mostly from the uh, speech from Powell today, signaling 50 basis point rate hike in the next two meetings. Now, again, they tend to talk a big talk and then deliver a lot less. So um, if energy costs are falling, that'd be a reason to not do the full 50 basis points. And if the war is escalating, that was the excuse this meeting to not do 50 basis point hike. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out in May. This chart, we compare ETHE to Tesla. Uh, it looks like there's a big catch up for Ethereum to catch up to Tesla uh, currently. This chart, we're comparing gold to silver. Uh, if, the, if this gets too far apart, uh, you potentially have a, uh, a play in silver that we might entertain. Um, at this point, we've held back in the uh, gold and silver play. Watching it carefully, um, I'd like to see less hawkish talk uh, and to, to get into that. And I, so I think what may happen to shoot gold and crypto much higher is the bond market forces uh, the Fed into more QE. And so far, they're, they're not talking about QE. So I've held back on that. This chart, we're looking at rare earth metals, copper miners, and uranium. Uh, currently, we're long rare earth metals and uranium in the uh, safe growth strategy. And we got a nice bid on uranium today uh, with the headline that Russia is going to uh, stop exporting uranium. Um, so these are two plays. Rare earth metals gives you access to lithium and cobalt. Uh, and the, the long-term play on this is beautiful uh, because we need batteries that need lithium. And uh, just between Tesla and Apple, they, they need just massive amounts of rare earth metals. Uh, uranium has a, a beautiful play if we're going to really get carbon emissions down. Uh, so those are our two plays we're currently in for the safe growth strategy. Here's the inflation uh, data so far. This does exclude food and energy. So I'll probably start pulling up the, uh, the, the other inflation data that includes that, which is at 7.9 right now. And so we can watch both uh, now again. If the war continues, this is gonna be problematic for bonds for a much longer time and potentially have uh, the Federal Reserve having to tighten too much in uh, crash markets essentially is the concern. So in the short term, uh, the rate hikes force you into these stocks, commodities and cryptocurrencies, uh, but eventually if the interest rates get too high, uh, it becomes a black hole and breaks everything around it. So uh, right now, the line in the sand for me would be TLT getting near 120. Uh, that would cause me to pr pretty much dump everything and go long bonds uh, until something snaps and then uh, rotate back into our uh, inflationary assets. 
the producer price index has been trading flat for the last four prints. So that's good news if we think inflation is going to peak out uh, and then fall. So we really want it to peak out and fall uh, in order for our current positioning to do really well. And again, as long as the war is going on, uh, it may stay, I don't think it's going to keep rising, but I do believe it may remain too high for too long. Uh, jobs keep growing. The wages keep growing. The labor force participation rate is growing, but not where we left off. Uh, bank credit continues to grow. There's some concern that with an inverted yield curve, it might stop bank loans. So we'll pay close attention to that. So far, not happening. Uh, savings rate fell really far, uh, fast last month. People were predicting the consumer would be forced to borrow tons of money. Didn't happen. They actually had a slowdown in consumer uh, borrowing last month. Uh, always fear that this is going to cause a collapse in the consumer in the U.S. So far, not happening. We've had two months of positive retail sales and just hit a new all-time high in consumer spending. Balance of trade just hit a new all-time high, meaning we import more than we export, uh, which over time with raising, rising deficits creates a weaker dollar. New home sales came in hot, so we're watching for a slowdown in the housing market due to uh, mortgage-backed securities interest rates rising so fast. So far, not happening. Uh, China import exports still at very elevated levels, showing no collapse in the global uh, economy at this point. The Fed's balance sheet should stop growing as of last week, didn't hit nine trillion, almost did. They're talking about running off a trillion a year for three years, getting this down to $6 trillion. Uh, if the US is gonna run a one to $2 trillion deficit, that means investors are gonna have to soak up uh, two to $3 trillion worth of debt per year. Uh, and again, investors don't wanna be uh, buying the, that debt uh, unless they think interest rates have peaked. So this is going to be bearish for bonds until things snap. ECB uh, coming out a little more dovish. They need to raise more debt, build a military, uh, and uh, support their economy with all these disruptions. So that continues to grow. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, news feed. Uh, Stephen says if the CPI is going up, why is producer price index flat? So yeah, the producer price index leads CPI and drives it towards that level. Uh, Stephen says, does the Russian-Ukrainian war have to end before DXY goes down to 90? Uh, probably, yeah. If it keeps escalating, I'd expect more and more people getting scared and going into uh, cash. Uh, let's see. Gene says, is it true that China is negotiating with Saudi Arabia to buy their oil using Chinese currency? If so, is the dollar in danger? The dollar's not in danger, but we are going to see gains in uh, commodity producing countries and uh, I think the yuan. So uh, there's China's not about to allow capital to flow out of its country. Uh, so the yuan is really not a competition. I, I do think it will increase its market share, but it's still going to be a fraction. And uh, Europe uh, is, a, is a mess still. Uh, so the only real threat to the dollar would be the euro. And at this point, I just don't see that being a problem. So yeah, I don't think the dollar is going to, to die anytime soon. Uh, but surely uh, it could lose some of its market share. Jeffrey Gunlack says the two-year U.S. Treasury yields up 86 basis points over the past three weeks alone. If that pace were to continue, which of course is pretty darn unlikely, the two-year would top 17% by March 1st, 2023. Now, he's been actually saying to buy treasuries, although that's been a bad bet so far this year. Uh, JP Morgan says buy the dip. Morgan Stanley says stocks have another 10 to 20% to go lower. So those two banks have been arguing about this for quite some time. Seth Golden says yield curve inversion and forward uh, SPY returns since 78 to 2005. So it is excluding that nasty decade of too much inflation and too much Paul Volcker or interest rate hikes. Uh, so if you 
assume that the inflation is going to peak out and fall, perhaps this data is more useful for us. Um, in general, the stock market's gonna go up after the yield curve inverts and you go into a rate hike cycle. And again, it's because nobody wants to buy bonds if they're almost guaranteed to lose money uh, over the short term. And so he's saying your average gain is uh, around 20% over 12 months. White House says U.S. wants to hear China condemn Russia's action on the ground in Ukraine or else. Tracy Chai Girl says, I'm still so bull bullish oil, it hurts for reasons beyond Russia. And I'm just trying to be reasonable. Biden says there's evolving intelligence that Russian government is exploring options for potential cyber attacks against the U.S., Russian central bank says their stock market will remain closed. Uh, here's a look at the return on bonds versus gold. And so they had been somewhat correlated here uh, until the inflation came in too hot. And we've seen much better return on gold over this period uh, compared to bonds. In fact, bonds have been getting slaughtered here. Seth Golden never has the SPY been negative from November through April of a midterm cycle since 1942. The starting point remains to be determined, but the buy signal is undeniable. Average return uh, heading into midterms is 17%, positivity rate 100%. Dylan LeClaire says, where is the breaking point in the bond market? I suspect we're going to find out. So this channel would suggest uh, 2.3 or so for the 10 year, uh, which we've touched, I believe. Um, so again, unless this inflation just stays elevated at the 7% range for months on end, uh, most likely uh, in the short term, these yields should be uh, pulling back here into to summer here that we've already priced in these uh, aggressive rate hikes that were just announced by Powell. Savon Henrik says, nice performance art by Pal. If he believed the urgency of all the things he said today, he should have raised 50 basis points last week. He didn't. Marco Rubio, as I've been saying now for 10 days, the Putin plan is no longer to take over Ukraine. The plan is to annex coastal south, lay siege to Kiev and five cities, uh, uh, and just offer a ceasefire on terms he's willing to claim as a strategic victory. Powell, uh, from Jim Bianco, Powell said the Fed had an expectation of inflation peaking in the first quarter and moderating in the second half of the year. Uh, Powell, that story has already fallen apart. Powell asked, what would prevent a 50 basis point move in May? Uh, Powell says nothing would prevent a 50 basis point hike. Longview says, alas, hawkish pal arrives just after the short covering rally and OPEX. So there's something like trillions that were going to be paid out to put option holders last week uh, that were saved miraculously by that market melt up. Um, so perhaps the central bank was trying to help that rally with a dovish surprise last week and then come out more hawkish today. Uh, here's the supply of homes, 1.7 months at the current rate that they're selling for. And there's a lot of uh, construction going up right now. India ignores Western pressure, buys cheap Russian oil, uh, 30 buck per barrel discount, so about a 27% discount. Pal says he expects that at the coming meetings, they will begin to reduce the balance sheet over three years. So the balance sheet could start to roll off potentially in May. Pal, if we conclude that it's appropriate to move more aggressively by raising the funds rate by more than 25 basis points at a meeting or meetings, we will do so. If we determine that we need to tighten beyond measures of neutral into a more restrictive stance, we will do that as well.
So Von Henrich says, Fed, first we brought you inflation through incessant printing. Now we'll bring you a recession and higher unemployment by slamming the foot on the brake. We are unelected, but we are here to help. Jim Bianco, TLT, iShares 20-year treasury ETF is the largest treasury ETF. Friday, it saw its largest daily inflow ever of $1.6 billion. And these inflows are getting crushed by today's sell-off, negative one and a half, uh, but we closed the day at negative 2.3. And again, we're getting very close to the level where I would start to, uh, to build into our positioning. If we didn't have the threat of sticky inflation uh, due to the war for months on end, I would be buying them right now. Uh, but it's just too hard to predict how long this war is going to go on. Lisa uh, Aberwitz says, traders are betting that inflation over the next five years will be the highest versus inflation over the next 10 years in data going back to 2002. This speaks to a belief that the cycle will run hotter and shorter and end with the same low inflation as before. Uh, EU's foreign minister, Borrell, says Russia is guilty of extreme war crimes. We are prepared to discuss energy sanctions. So the way this really escalates is either Putin cuts off energy to Europe, which I think is the least likely. Uh, Europe starts to sanction the energy itself, which uh, would be rough for Europe. Uh, but they're already starting to try to reroute the order flow, which slowly drives up our uh, basically war hedge on boil. Uh, or the U.S. starts to pick on India and China for buying uh, Russian energy. So that's really what we're seeing as the potential ways this escalates. A de-escalation, uh, Ukraine and Russia come to some sort of negotiation and, and the war ends. So how much pain can Ukraine really take? U.S. two-year yields rise to 2% for the first time since 2019. The two-year bond yield is a good leading indicator of the federal funds rate, but it likes to overshoot. Um, so we can see it rising up here in the last period over 2018. Again, this is where uh, we started hiking rates back in 2016 and uh, Bitcoin ran up all the way until uh, these interest rates got too high. Then we had everything breaking uh, until we had to reverse course by the end of the year. And so you can see they started lowering rates back to zero. Uh, and here we go, repeating the cycle. Throughput data from TSA, so that's uh, tracking the uh, travelers and airports, continue to underscore the reality that uh, travelers have come back despite elevated uh, oil costs and, of course, flight costs. Chinese Foreign Ministry, China will continue its usual trade relation with Russia. Russia considering banning of uranium exports. Uh, the CEO of Grayscale Trust, the one we're along with ETHE, says our number one priority as a firm is to convert into an ETF. And supposedly that would reduce that uh, discount. Uh, it currently trades at about 25% discount. German producer prices rose 26% year on year, going straight up. Another look at the same chart. Ukraine rejects Russian demands to surrender Maripol. They had a, something like a 5 a.m. deadline last uh, this morning. Uh, so the war continues on. You ain't seen nothing yet with oil prices. Uh, so it's looking at some of these spikes we've seen in the past. If the, uh, in, so yeah, we, if we do get a little bit of a pullback and it looks like the war is going to march on, I would like to get half boil, half NRG. I regret that we didn't have that over this period. Uh, but at this point, uh, with energy at uh, almost an all-time high, uh, oil close to that level where they like to shock it back down, and natural gas still trading at a relative discount, 
I like Boyle the best. Uh, Michael Saylor says, if you don't understand money, you don't understand bit or you won't understand Bitcoin. The CEO of Binance says, if you don't understand Bitcoin, you don't understand money. Putin says, clearly Kiev's Western patrons are just pushing them to continue the bloodshed. They incessantly supply Kiev with weapons and intelligence, as well as other types of assistance, including military advisories and mercenaries. So I don't think they're going to stop Putin unless they cut off his energy uh, income. And again, we're hedged against that risk. Fun fact, Ethereum processed four and a half times more transactions than Visa in 2021. Dan Held says there aren't enough Bitcoin for every millionaire in the world. 56 million millionaires, only 21 million Bitcoin. After clinching gas deal with Qatar, Germany's economy minister says we might still need Russian gas this year, but not in the future, and adds, uh, he who has ears should start to listen. Uh, Bloomberg says, uh, stop eating protein, eat lentils. Lentils are up 100% over year as well. I know I keep bringing propane up, but the U.S. is now just below 35 days of supply. You know what industry relies on propane the most? Farming. Okay, very good. That does get us back to um, to a couple days back here. Let's see. EC Cohen says, being an election year, can you see the Fed reversing their increases? Well, I th they got to get the inflation down. That's what the Democrats are getting uh, nailed to the cross on. Uh, so Powell's trying to trying to get it the demand to slow down with tightening policy without creating a stock crash. Um, and so far, it's just not working. Um, but so far, the strategy has been to talk a big hype uh, about all the hawkish talk and then deliver less. So far, that's what they've been doing. So we'll see uh, if they actually start to get more aggressive in May, uh, if this inflation is not coming down. OK, guys, so we're about to review the exact asset allocation of both strategies. And if you're on a free trial, this is where your video ends. You'll have to call Dean to upgrade to get the rest and access to the membership area, which is where you can punch in how much you want to invest and it will automatically calculate how many shares to buy. So call Dean now at 505-322-7515.